Normally we don't do interviews on Free Talk Live. Free Talk Live is mostly about calls, but every once in a while we have an opportunity that uh, we just can't pass up, and I think we've got one of those opportunities this evening. We've got Roger Ver uh, of MemoryDealers.com. Roger, are you there? I am here. Excellent. Now, Roger, you've gotten excited about a product recently that um, is, you know, it's not your product. It's something called the Bitcoin. Wait, we're not going to talk about DDR and uh, and RAM and, and all kinds of computer geeky stuff? Thank goodness, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's lots of shows that'll do that for you. <laughs> Probably better Although than Bitcoins we Bitcoins are a bit computer geeky at this point. Yeah, they are. They are. So, uh, Roger, what is a Bitcoin for folks that don't know? So for those that are just hearing about Bitcoin for the first time, it's basically the world's first peer-to-peer uncentralized currency. And what that means in, in basic English is that there's no central controlling entity. Bitcoins aren't controlled by any corporation. They're not controlled by any government. They're simply controlled by all the users of Bitcoin as a whole. So no single entity can block you from performing transactions with your Bitcoins. So, for example, recently lots of people wanted to donate to WikiLeaks, or occupy, occupy Wall Street with PayPal. But uh, the government put pressure on uh, Visa and MasterCard and PayPal to block those transactions because those entities are centralized. With Bitcoins, nobody can stop you from making a donation to WikiLeaks or, or Occupy Wall Street or anyone at all anywhere in the world because of the, the design of the Bitcoin network. So, so it's really a revolution in, in, in monetary systems. And I just want to make it clear, you've got no you've got no real stake in bitcoins. How this, could you? Yeah, right. You can't. I mean, this is just a currency and this is a this you have as much stake in this as some as you coming on and advocating say the use of uh, gold or silver as a currency. I mean, it you know, it's just you believe in the product and you know something about it and that's why you're here for the interview. That's right. I'm I'm so excited about bitcoins because I think it can be, you know, an absolutely fantastic chance for everybody to have more financial privacy and to basically control their own finances without uh, basically when you're using U.S. dollars, the U.S. government can still control everything that happens with it. They can inflate them. They can take them out of your bank account. They can do anything they want at any time. With bitcoins, it's a mathematical impossibility for those things to happen. You can have 100% control over your own money. So basically, it's a way to take back control of your own money from the banks and the government and corporations and have 100% control over your own money. So I I couldn't possibly be more excited about a system like that, and I think it's going to revolutionize the world. Yeah, you're, I mean, Roger's so excited about this that he came on to advertise his company, Memory Dealers, a couple of few years ago on Free Talk Live, and then over the last year or so, you've basically said, screw this, I'm taking my Memory Dealers ads off the air, we're going to talk about Bitcoin. You've literally just been pouring your own personal savings into promoting at least that's the impression I've gotten, into promoting the Bitcoin because you're just that excited about it. That's exactly right. I think it's, uh, it's going to do the same thing to banks that the uh, email did to the post office. It's, it's just an absolutely world-changing technology, and I want more and more people to hear about it and find out about it. And you know, the more people that use it, the more useful it is, and uh, it's gaining popularity every day. Uh, there's more users now than there were six months ago. There's more services than there were six months ago. Lots of really, really smart people are working on new software for it every day, and it's getting easier and easier to use. And a year from now, I'm sure it'll be even easier than it is today. You know, this is this is true. I have purchased things from Amazon. Uh, Amazon. Freetalklive. Com. Excuse me. Uh, what, what, what do we use? Shop. 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 Shop.freetalklive.com from uh, Amazon, and I did it through a third-party vendor, and they took my bitcoins and then bought the thing that I wanted and sent it to me. And so you can use bitcoins in lots and lots of different ways now. And I'm really, um, you know, I'm I'm excited about them too. But you know, I I don't have the expertise as to know why they're important. And um, one of the things that you pointed out, which is you know, it's really important, is when you use dollars, the United States government can decide. From a political standpoint, WikiLeaks has never been charged with anything. Occupy Wall Street has never been charged with anything. But the United States government has pressured uh, organizations like Visa and MasterCard and you know PayPal and things like this in order to get what they want from those mm. organizations, which is no payment going to them. That's exactly right. And with Bitcoins, that would be impossible. Nobody can ever block you from sending a payment to anyone anywhere in the world which is really, really an amazing technology. So, uh, for example, if you're living in a, in a country that has uh, you know, governmental currency controls, with Bitcoin, they can't stop it. You can send or receive as much money as you want from anyone you want to anywhere you want, anywhere in the world, and nobody can stop it, and nobody can even necessarily know about it if you don't want to make it public. 
So with a little bit of effort, you can make Bitcoins as private as you want it to be. Um, with Bitcoins, people don't even need to know that you own them. Uh, it's really, really an amazing technology. Um, now, um, you, you say that there's um, no third-party fees, and that's that's kind of interesting. What um, you know, if a business owner, for instance, um, you know, takes bitcoins as cash, uh, there's there's no chargebacks, right? I mean, this this can be a real problem for business owners. This whole this whole chargeback thing, doing business online. Right. For any, anybody that you know does online sales with uh, credit cards, you'll know that all the time people will try and buy stuff with you using a stolen credit card. And with Bitcoins, it's exactly like you said, there cannot be a chargeback. Once you've sent the money, it's gone. And the only way to have that returned, if you were the one that sent it, would be to ask that person to send it back to you. So in the future, I think Bitcoins will be used for trusted transactions like Amazon.com, where you trust the company to do the right thing. And you'll feel just fine sending Bitcoins because there's a 3% discount there that Amazon won't have to pay to the credit card company. And you'll be likely to use credit cards for shady transactions where you don't necessarily trust the website that you're sending the money to because you know that in the future you can call up the credit card company and ask for your money back. So, you know, uh, right Roger, now, people- on, on that point, uh, having done some research into Bitcoins, and uh, I have some Bitcoins, obviously, and uh, looking into services like the, uh, um, the, the Silk Road, I don't know if they're still up, but they probably are. I hear they are. Uh, the Silk Road is basically like a black market that's kind of an open air black market, so to speak. It's it's there. It's on the Tor network, so you you have to anonymize yourself to even get into it in the first place. But anybody can go in as long as they know how to get there. You go through this Tor network, so you're completely anonymized when you go into it. You create an anonymous account, and you can buy things that otherwise you might be put in a jail cell for purchasing. So, for instance, uh, illegal. Drug- Drugs, for instance, are available through the Silk Road Marketplace. <clears throat> and you might ask yourself, well, you know, if Bitcoins is this final transaction, what happens if you get ripped off? Well, you could get ripped off in the black market anyway. You might even get beaten and robbed in the black market. So in this case, you're avoiding the risk of being beaten and robbed. You're only risking having, you know, the money being taken from you. But even that is mitigated because the, they actually have like an eBay-like rating system where you, even though the, uh, the sellers are anonymous, the sellers want to keep selling. So they do, you know, most of them are doing honest business. And so therefore, you know, they, if they do some business, obviously in the beginning, people are taking a chance working with a new seller. But once he starts building up his reputation, you know, most people aren't going to bat an eye at buying from somebody that's got a, a good reputation on these, even on an anonymous service. So even with that aspect, I think there are still ways around it with rating systems. Yeah, that's exactly right. And I'll tell you from a firsthand experience in the traditional business world, uh, just because somebody rips you off using U.S. dollars doesn't mean you have much recourse either. So there's not a whole lot of difference there. But the market will find a way to provide a reputation system, just like you said. Roger, I want to uh, hold on to you here if I can. Um, you can give us a call. Ask any questions you have about Bitcoins to Roger Ver of MemoryDealers.com. It's 855-450-3733 here on Free Talk Live's live Saturday edition with Ian. I mean, Mark. <laughs> Who are you again? I- I'm Mark. <laughs> Roger's not in charge of Bitcoins. Nobody is, but he sure knows a lot about them. Free Talk Live. Free Talk Live, 855 453 That's the SACL toll-free call-in line, 855-450-3733. You can call in and well, right now we're doing basically an interview with Roger Ver from MemoryDealers.com about bitcoins um and what they are and why they're of benefit to you because this is a pretty new phenomenon out there let's make sure i can pull roger up here roger yep hey hey, roger what time is it where you are uh it's a little after 10 a.m here 10 a.m 9 a.m 9 20 Call- calling from tokyo is it that's correct Wow. That's right. Uh, the sun never sets on Free Talk Live. We're a morning so, show over there, Mark. <laughs> that's right. We're the, we're the morning drive show in Tokyo. Come at you, Tokyo. <laughs> you're, you're my favorite podcast. I listen to you guys every day on the trains here in Tokyo. Yeah. Thank you, Roger. Um, if, real quick here. If you've been um, hearing about the new digital currency known as Bitcoin, yet obtaining them has been tricky until now. Crypto exchange is the fastest and safest way to buy and sell your bitcoins they also offer a complete bullion store so you can go and buy gold and silver privately with bitcoin 
If you're totally clueless about Bitcoin currency, they've got a 24-hour customer service line there. Just uh, visit their website and click on the live support link at the top. Somebody will come up to help you. You can see crypto exchange banner posted at uh, bitcoin.freetalklive.com. It's probably the best way to find it because uh, spelling crypto exchange here isn't really going to work out too well. It's uh, bitcoin.freetalklive.com is the best way to uh, to get to that banner. It's also on the side of the page at freetalklive.com. Well, I have to say I'm interested in this crypto exchange. I'm actually signing up for an account right now to kind of check it out a little bit further. But basically the idea is they'll let you buy and sell bitcoins in any currency. That's the idea. That's pretty cool. So, Roger, you were I was saying, uh, you know, about a currency. One of the things about currencies that's important is that they not be able to be counterfeited very easily. But, you know, everybody knows that you could do a pretty good approximation of a U.S. dollar with a laser printer. Um and it, that's why they have a, an entire force of men uh, who are armed who will go after you if you try to do that. That's sort of the, uh, the United States government system for handling counterfeit. But Bitcoin doesn't have a group of armed men. How does it handle it counterfeiting? That's right. Bitcoins are protected by something much better than the Secret Service. Bitcoins are pro- protected by the rules of mathematics. So if, if you point a gun at the rules of mathematics, they're not going to flinch. They don't care if you're pointing a gun at them or not. So the Bitcoin network currently is more powerful than the world's top 500 supercomputers combined. So uh, there's pretty much no way that you can counterfeit a Bitcoin. Back that statement so, up. Hold on. Bitcoin's more powerful than the world's – what? Top 500 supercomputers combined. Okay. So the Bitcoin what, network – What could they do to the, beat up uh, Bitcoin, those 500 supercomputers? They, they can't because they're not uh, – they don't have more processing power than the entire Bitcoin network. So, so you, would need, you would need a lot more processing power than the entire Bitcoin network in order to maybe stop transactions from going through as easily with the Bitcoin network. But uh, that's not likely to happen as Bitcoin becomes more and more popular. The Bitcoin network will be stronger and stronger and stronger. So you know, what the, that the brings Bitcoin. up a very interesting question, Roger, is who uh, – so when you think about currencies, most of the currencies in the world are created by governments. And so Bitcoin is in competition with people that, frankly, aren't very used to competition in their geographic area. They don't like competition in their geographic area. And they have a propensity to use um, you know, groups of people with guns to get what they want uh, as opposed to working in the market place like uh you know most people do what what um how is bitcoin going to compete against say governments that hire armies of hackers to take it down it's you can't half you cannot hack mathematics so that's that's the exciting point about bitcoins is the fundamental mathematics behind it is totally sound you can't you can't threaten mathematics. You can't force mathematics to do your bidding. Math is what it is. So that's that's what's so exciting about Bitcoin is that, you know, it, it doesn't really matter. Math is math, and you're not going to change the you know the rules of the universe. So math is part of. How does how does and you say that Bitcoins are private, and one of the you know people that one of the agencies that people might want to be private from are agencies that wish wish to take money from you, whether that money is on a local level, you know where you know you've got a gang that's doing protection in your given area, or you live in some uh, regime where you don't want to, where you feel the find the taxes to be overly burdensome, or whatever the reason is that you want to be private, what? is um how how is bitcoin private i mean how how do you make that happen because you know the average person can get a bitcoin wallet pretty easily but you got to be kind of a little more savvy to be private right that, that's right it takes a, it, a little bit more savviness to be private uh, a good rule of thumb is to use a different bitcoin address for every single transaction and basically what that means is every person who has a bitcoin account has a bitcoin address it works kind of like an email address where anybody can send money to that address But with Bitcoin, you can have as many addresses as you want. You can have one million different Bitcoin addresses. So if you use a different address every single time, uh, it makes it much, much more difficult to track what's going on. There's a a lot of good information on the Bitcoin Wiki. If you Google Bitcoin Wiki, you can find all sorts of information on how to do things much more privately to the point where you can make it so that people don't even know that you have an account. So um... uh, it's really... When you send something, do you always send it from the same address? If you can receive at different addresses, do you always send from the same address, though? No, it, it will send from the address that the coins were originally received from. But then there's all sorts of other interesting services online called, basically called Bitcoin mixers, which if you have some Bitcoins, you can mix yours with a whole bunch of other people's Bitcoins. So then the output will go to whoever you send, but to anybody looking at it from the outside – 
They'll have no idea where your bitcoins came from or where they went to because they got mixed together with you know a thousand other people's bitcoins. I bet they won't because I don't even have, a, a, have any idea of how this would be done. <laughs> well, now when you're saying people can look in from the outside, the reason that's possible is because the entire bitcoin network is completely transparent in that if you have an address – you can go and look it up online and you can see all of the transactions that have come in and gone out from that particular address. That's exactly right. So in one sense, the Bitcoin network is totally public where everybody can see how much money was sent from what Bitcoin address to another, but nobody necessarily knows who owns what Bitcoin addresses. So right. The only, the only way that know, somebody would know if you owned an address was if you advertised that you had that address. Right, but you could have a million different other addresses that nobody knows that you do own. Right, so you could have the one public address that you put out to people, and then you could have other private addresses where you take that money from the public address and put it to wherever you want it to go, and people would have no idea about those. That's exactly right. And, you know, the uh, uh, agencies known as governments that want to tax transactions. Like the IRS. Yeah, the IRS or whatever. They, um, they uh, you know, Bitcoin's... How do you even quantify what kind of business you're doing? How do you say, you know, how do you even report that? Even if you wanted to, how would you do it? I mean, because you're doing business in another currency. Yeah. Right. It's also new. It's all brand new. And uh, we'll see what the, the lawyers and the politicians decide they want to force upon the rest of us. Well, they're not speaking of the politicians, one of the politicians, I can't remember which one it was, uh, came out and said basically that uh, bitcoins are bad. Silk Road is bad, 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 bad. Well, yeah, of course it's bad. It's bad for their power structure and bad for the status quo. And in fact, and I think Bitcoin came right on time. It's been around for a couple of years now, two, three years. It's really starting to come into its own, I think, at this point. As you said, Roger, they're all these new services that are constantly coming out and some of them come and some of them go so you kind of have to be careful with who you deal with make sure you don't keep a bunch of a bunch of bitcoins with them that's that's a lesson i learned the hard way because there was this one company that just kind of went under all of a sudden yeah it was and, a bank that just basically you know blew town yeah and took took my bitcoins with them um, but I think it's really right on time because next year, January 1st, the IRS is going to start enforcing rules on PayPal and other financial providers to where if you don't give them your tax info, they're going to keep 30% of every transaction. The IRS is. It's crazy. Disgusting. Yeah, Roger, will you uh, hold the line here? Um, you can give us a call if you have any questions about Bitcoins at 855 450 Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. That's the SACL toll-free call in line here on the live Saturday edition of Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. It's Mark with you. And Ian. Ian, tell me about the uh, Free State Project Liberty Forum. Well, I can tell you we've been talking about the Bitcoin here uh, tonight, and we're going to continue that with uh, with Roger Ver. But uh, there's a huge level of support for Bitcoin within the Liberty community. Uh, I know that uh, Eric Voorhees is uh, very excited about it. He's one of the guys with uh, crypto exchange that we were just talking about there. There's like a Bitcoin consortium of some sort of uh, free staters and liberty activists that are behind the Bitcoin because they see the value in it. So I imagine the Bitcoin is going to be one of those uh, topics of hot discussion at the upcoming Liberty Forum, if not in some sort of an official manner, but certainly between the the attendees coming up here in uh, February, February 23rd through the 26th. We're going to be there broadcasting live every single night, and hundreds of like-minded, liberty-oriented people are going to be in attendance as well. And that's the real reason to come out, is not to see the speakers and the panel discussions and go to the banquet dinners and, and all the kind of convention-y things that will be going on. That, that's all great, but the real reason to go is to meet up with people who think like you do. That is, if you love liberty and you want a chance at seeing freedom in your lifetime, this is the place to go to get a vibe for what's going on here in New Hampshire with the Free State Project. Go to freestateproject.org slash Liberty Forum. You can get registered there, grab the early bird discounted rates, and save yourself an extra 10% by using our discount code, which is FTL2012. That's FTL2012 to get an extra 10% off the already low, very affordable rates for the Liberty Forum. Coming up in February, freestateproject.org slash Liberty Forum. And Roger Ver is with us uh, from Memory Dealers. We're talking about Bitcoin, which he's very excited about, as uh, as are a lot of the people in the movement. And Roger, I know you had originally planned to come up to the Free State Project's Porcupine Freedom Festival. Do You have any, You weren't able to make it out, unfortunately, at the last minute. Uh, something else came up. But do you have any plans to come to the Liberty Forum? I'm just curious. Uh, it's possible. I, I, I'm sure I'll make it to New Hampshire at some point. I've been a Free State uh, Project member for a number of years now, and uh, I'll make it out there at some point. 
Excellent. Well, the Liberty Forum is a great excuse to to come out and check out New Hampshire right in the dead of uh, of winter. <laughs> you know, Roger, one thing you mentioned was uh, listening to Free Talk Live on your uh, tr- train trip there in Tokyo uh, every day to go to work. And anybody can do that. We have archives going back for, man, like five years at archives.freetalklive.com. We do the show seven days a week. We used to do it six, but now we do it seven days a week. Um, we have diff- different hosts that do it at different times. And you can get the um, – that, that show that we do every day. So that's out, you know hundreds, thousands of hours of uh, Free Talk Live available to you for free at archives.freetalklive.com. So, Roger, we've been talking about uh, the, the Bitcoin all along here. And what would the – as far as the individual goes, I mean there's a lot of people who are probably listening to this and trying to figure out what is a Bitcoin. You know, how does yeah, it – I was going to say you should recap what a Bitcoin yeah. is. How does it benefit me? And I just want you to you know, uh, quickly tell people how does it benefit the person who's listening? Well, uh, one, one thing that would benefit a person who's listening, if they want to buy something online, if you use a credit card, you have to worry about identity theft. They can get your credit card number and then go on a shopping spree and cause all sorts of trouble for you. Yep. If you pay with Bitcoin, all, all the merchant needs to know is that you paid them and where to ship the goods, and then maybe an email address for them to contact you. You don't have to give them any other information about you. You can just pay, and especially if you're buying virtual goods online, they don't need your address or any of that other information. Just send them the Bitcoins and tell them what to do with your virtual goods, and it's done. So it, it protects from identity theft. Uh, you don't have to worry about uh, other people uh, getting a hold of your your credit card number and spending it. Basically, they uh, they won't be able to authorize your card to see how what your what your uh, maximum card limit is. Uh, if maybe a lot of people don't know this, but when you use a credit card somewhere at an online store, it's pretty easy for the merchant to see how much money they could charge your card. Hmm. Uh, with really? bitcoins, they have yeah. If you have a People don't necessarily need to know how many bitcoins you have in your account, so it gives you a lot more privacy. If you're selling things online using bitcoins, uh, basically nobody really needs to know how many things you've sold. The only person that will know is that one transaction. So if you sell a thousand different things to a thousand different people, the uh, the one person might not necessarily know about the other 999 people. Also, so, the the fees uh, that go into using uh, credit cards online are incorporated in the costs of things. I mean, that's just the way that is. And it's one of the reasons it's difficult to get low-cost things online because – you know, it costs a company. You know, most of the purchase price when they when they per- when you buy something for a dollar, most of that is going to the credit card company, sadly, and or at least a good portion of it is going to the credit card company. Whereas with bitcoins, there are no fees in, inside of the transaction costs. Um, I mean, there there may be a fee to uh, transfer your bitcoins out of uh, bitcoins into dollars, but anytime you do a currency exchange, there's going to be um, you know fees, whether you're changing dollars into drachmas or into bitcoins, right? Right, that's that's right. And one uh, actually exciting development that just was announced uh, earlier this week is a company called OKPay.com. Now will send you a Mastercard that you can recharge using Bitcoins anytime. So basically, it's like a Mastercard that will debit your Bitcoin account. So you can spit. It's a physical card that you have. You can go into you know Lucky's really? or Walgreens or any store, use your Mastercard, and it'll debit your Bitcoin account. That's which incredible. Is, I think, Wait, a pretty wh- exciting news. Give, me, give me that name again. I want to check that one out. Sure, that's okpay.com, and they just announced that recently. Another exciting thing that they're going to be announcing, they say, next week is basically they'll have plugins for all the major online shopping carts. So if you run an online website that sells goods, they'll make it super, super easy to accept Bitcoins on your website. Uh, there's a couple of services that already do that. Another one is bit-pay.com. And one thing that's really convenient for merchants, if you want to accept Bitcoins as a payment, you can choose – what percentage of the payment to receive in bitcoins and what percentage to receive in U.S. dollars or euros or yen or whatever currency you want. Wow, wow that's outstanding. at the outstanding. time of the sale, it will automatically convert the bitcoins that are received into whatever percentage of a government-issued currency you want, and, and you can keep the remainder in bitcoins, up to 100% to dollars if you want, or 100% in bitcoins. The merchant can choose, which I think is really, really convenient. Yeah, and, sure. Uh, these tools are getting better every week, and I think more and more online shops are going to be accepting bitcoins because of these new tools. Absolutely. Why would an online shop not want to accept bitcoins is really the question you have to ask. I mean, bitcoins really do, you know, I mean, it can be so difficult to do business online with uh, the way that, uh, you know, credit card companies just seem to favor the heck out of the, uh, the customer. And I understand why customers want protection. And that kind of thing, but credit card companies uh, can can act like it doesn't matter what your product is as long as the customer is protected. You know, uh, so they got something now there's charge back. They're not going to worry about whether or not the person returns the item. They'll just charge it back. 
That's right. And with uh, you know millions and millions of dollars of bitcoins floating around uh, floating around out there in the world, there's no reason why an online merchant wouldn't want to accept bitcoins. And it's getting easier and easier to do that every day. So if you have an online store, look into it. It's just a real simple plug-in for all the most popular online shopping cart softwares. Just plug it in, and boom, you're ready to accept Bitcoin. Yeah, and I'd like to point out you've got no stake in this Bitcoin. You don't make any money from Bitcoins or anything like that. So, No, um, I, I just think that it's going to help set the world free. It's going to let people have control of their own money. And that's what people are so upset about with all the bailouts in the United States. The only reason that was able to happen is because the government can print as much money as they want and do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. If the world was using bitcoins, the bailouts would have been impossible. They can't take your bitcoins. They can't make fake bitcoins. They can't give imaginary bitcoins to someone else. It's it's, it's actually – it's, it's true decentralization of the money supply. I mean, it doesn't require any anything central. There's there's no Bitcoin head office. There's no Bitcoin corporation. There's no vault for the feds to go and raid. There's no server farm for them to take offline. I mean, it's, it's completely untouchable by the federal government or any government. That's exactly right. That's, and that's what's so exciting about it is that it cannot be stopped. So people can do what they want with their own money. And there's nothing any organization, you know, government or corporation or anybody else can do about it. You have 100 percent control over your own money. That's what's so exciting about Bitcoin. And that's why liberty lovers should be so excited and interested in Bitcoin. You know, when you um, you mentioned WikiLeaks and uh, and Occupy Wall Street and how they had their uh, their bank accounts blocked and essentially, you know, through the, the government's pressure on organizations like Visa, MasterCard, PayPal and and places like that. And I I think that this is, uh, you know, I mean, are, are Occupy Wall Street and uh, WikiLeaks, are they taking bitcoins right now? I mean, do they know enough to circumvent this? Because this is a relatively new technology that people haven't quite uh, gotten there. A lot of people haven't gotten their heads around yet. Are, are they taking stuff like that? Absolutely. You can go on over to WikiLeaks.com right now and make a donation in Bitcoin. And uh, WikiLeaks is smart. They know that a lot of the people that give them money might want to be anonymous. So they set up a different Bitcoin address for every single transaction. Uh, so if you request a Bitcoin address, they'll send you a unique address every time. Got it. Free Talk Live. Free Talk Live, 855-450 free. That's a sacral toll-free call in line here on the live Saturday edition of Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. You can call in. And, well, right now we're talking to Roger Ver, and it's probably best to uh, take calls uh, regarding bitcoins. But, uh, you know, at the top of the hour, we'll certainly be taking calls about anything that uh, you want to talk about. Let's go back to Roger Ver, calling from Tokyo, uh, proprietor of... Uh, MemoryDealers.com, and uh, we're talking about Bitcoins. Roger, we've, we've discussed some of the benefits of Bitcoins from the, uh, the standpoint of, uh, you know, why, what sort of societally, how uh, a currency that's not controlled by a corporation or a government or a bank. It's a completely decentralized digital currency that can be used anonymously and securely. I mean, it's, it's an incredible product. Yeah. We've discussed the advantages from the standpoint of uh, the consumer, standpoint of business owners. One thing that I've heard um, as a critique of Bitcoins, and I'm sure you've heard this too, is they're not backed by anything. Uh, libertarians often want uh, currency that's backed by gold and silver. Um, you know, they'll they'll say that uh, you know bring back the gold standard and, and that kind of thing. What do you have to say to that critique? Um, I, I think uh, bitcoins are backed by a lot more than the U.S. dollar. Um, bitcoins are used voluntarily. Basically, bitcoins are only worth whatever people are willing to exchange them for. But bitcoins have inherent properties that make them incredibly useful. Gold has been used as money for thousands of years. But it's really, really difficult to send a gold coin from myself here in Tokyo to you guys there in New Hampshire. But if I wanted to send you guys $1,000 worth of bitcoins, I can do it with a couple of clicks on my keyboard, and boom, you guys have the money. Mm -hmm. Right. If you send the gold coin, you have to insure it. You hope it gets there. It's going to take, uh, you know, what, three weeks to get to to do it in in any way along the place. Uh, You could just send the you could just send the bitcoins. We could convert that into gold here if we needed to. That much is true. That's exactly right. And uh, I, I know some uh, liberty activists in New Hampshire said that they're more, more than willing to exchange bitcoins for U.S. dollars or back and forth. So uh, there's another interesting website called BTC Near Me where you can put in your zip code and it'll tell you all the people near where you are that are willing to buy and sell bitcoins for uh, whatever local cur- currency they use where you live. Do they and register kind of with btcnearme.com um, to you know, be on that? Do they register with that website too? Or, or do, does that website any, aggregate can, people? 
it, it just aggregates them. Anybody can sign up with an email address and your zip code, and then uh, you'll see all the other people near you that are willing to buy and sell things with uh, Bitcoins. And that's btcnearme.com. Yeah, and it bears uh, it bears mentioning here that uh, that you have no real stake in bitcoins. I mean, this is just something that you know something about, and I've asked uh, you to be on because well, I don't know that much can, about. Can it. we go back real quick to this uh, objection about you know? There's nothing backing it. Yeah, that's I, I, I wanted to. It's a, it's a good objection, but and it was the objection I came up with first when I'd first heard about bitcoins. Me too. Whoa, wait a minute. Um, but the, it seems to me, after learning more about the bitcoin and and having some experience with it, that any currency is valuable because of belief. Right, people believe in the U.S. dollar. We know there's no real inherent value to it, and that it's not backed by anything. But people believe in it. Well, so it, that it's and a medium of exchange, valuable. it's accepted as it's. Well, that's the reason why it's accepted as valuable because it's convenient and it and it works, and people believe in it. But if people didn't believe in the dollar, you tried putting giving it to somebody, they would laugh at you. Elephants I mean, are worth something. Everybody knows it, but not everybody wants elephants, yeah. and they're difficult to put in your pocket. So the question is, are bitcoins uh, valuable to the people that use them? And the answer is clearly yes. I mean, the people that are using bitcoins, like you said, Roger, there's all these neat services that are popping up. And that's because there's interest in the bitcoin, that that, that people already value the bitcoin. You go to cryptoexchange.com or, and you can see there at the top of the page, there's a value assigned in U.S. dollars. You can change it to other currencies. But there's a current market value for the bitcoins. So you can actually see what people think this is worth. Now, sure. it's fluctuated. And you can get those, that many dollars for your Bitcoins, right? Then and there, you can get right. it. And it's fluctuated wildly. I mean, we've seen it at over $30 per Bitcoin, 30 US dollars per Bitcoin. It's now hovering at around $2.20 uh, per Bitcoin. It's also been as low as under a dollar, but that's it's been a long time since it's been that low. It's been over a dollar since, like, uh, what, almost an entire year at this point. So there there is real value in it. It is valuable in the marketplace for all the reasons we're talking about, sure. decentralization, getting away from the government, avoiding having the IRS find out about it, taxing it, all of that stuff. And the more services that come out, the more people start using it, the more valuable it becomes. That and I think that's backed by the logarithm, um, the, the, the thing, the, the math that makes it impossible to counterfeit. Mm-hmm. Because everything else out there can be counterfeited, even gold. I mean, you can put lead inside of a gold coin, you know, sure. put gold around it. And, uh, so Bitcoin's not counterfeitable. Uh, Roger, let's go to Mike in Colorado with a question here. Mike? Mike, you're on with Roger. Mike? Um, what? You're, you're on the radio for Free Talk Live. Uh, What's on your mind? Um, I, just was, I just wanted to say like, how people can spend Bitcoins and stuff. Like, there are a lot of cool services, so. Like what? Like what? Um, like, I know that you can buy a like, service and buy a whole bunch of stuff. You can even buy gold. I found this website. It's pretty cool. Which website are you referring to that you can buy gold? Um, it was like coinabul.com, I think it was. Coin a what? Abul.com. There's actually a number of different websites that will sell gold and silver coins using bitcoins. Yeah, the last thing you want to do is just uh, – I mean you've got to check every every proprietor out and get yeah. ratings and things like that. I mean you know, this is – we're just talking about people that are claiming to sell at this point. We're not advocating any of them. Yeah, also I um, know this other um, place that – like for servers, it's called btcvps.net. It's pretty cool. Okay, so he's just providing a couple of examples of uh, things that you can do right now with the Bitcoin, like buy online service, like uh, internet web service, for instance. Uh, Mike, what have you website. bought with what have you bought with bitcoins? Um, I bought in the, I bought a whole bunch of stuff. Um, mostly I just like buy and sell them and trade them, but I've been looking at a lot of different websites just for like the fun of it. So yeah, so you're using it as a commodity at this point. You uh, yeah. buy some, you sell some, you trade them, you see if you can make some money doing it, like a currency yeah. exchange. Yeah. Cool. Great. Mike, appreciate the call. 855-450-3733. Roger, uh, what, it, what is it that we haven't covered about the Bitcoin that you think is important to get out tonight? Uh, one, one thing that I think is interesting is when I actually first heard about Bitcoins on your show, uh, I went and looked at the Bitcoin Wikipedia page, or week, the Bitcoin, Bitcoin Wiki. And at that point, there were only around a dozen, maybe two dozen businesses that were listed as accepting Bitcoins mm-hmm. as payment. If you go and look at that same page today... There's now thousands of different businesses that accept really? Bitcoins. Because yes, that was my that was one of my original objections was, you know, like a year or two ago when we first heard like two years two years ago when we first heard about this. It's like, yeah, what am I gonna do with these things? Right. And that was them? my that was my original concern, but now it's completely different. I've bought uh, nutritional supplements, um, electronics, I've bought uh, books online. I know someone who bought illegal drugs with it too, and it was okay. great. <laughs> you could do it. I mean, you know, and and if one has a problem with bitcoins, 
for the people for the ability to purchase illegal drugs or uh, weapons or whatever online on the silkroad.com using these this tor anonymizer. I don't think it's silkroad.com, but it's some something else will get you there. Okay. Anyway. Well, anyway, um, if if somebody has a problem with that for that reason, then one should have a problem with cash in general. Right. Because, I mean, people are buying drugs and guns and things like that with cash. Bitcoin is just a currency. And, you know, what people choose to buy and sell with their currency is up to them. Now, as far as I'm concerned, when it comes to weapons, weapons aren't dangerous. It's the people that hold them that are. Um, it's, when it comes to drugs, I think that there are benefits to uh, to, to drugs of, of sorts. Um, you know, I mean, as far as recreational drugs go, hey, look, right, one of the most dangerous recreational drugs in the world is alcohol, and it's legal pretty much everywhere. So. I think the Bitcoin's amazing. I'm glad you brought that up, Roger. That uh, that you know there there are a lot more now today than there were just a year ago of places to spend and buy these things. Let's go directly to uh, David and Keen. You got a, a question, real quick, David. Doesn't matter, David. What's the? Uh, you're on the air with uh, uh, Roger hey. Ver from Free Talk Live. What's your question? Oh, I was, I just tuned in, and it's about Bitcoin. Yeah. And I was I was wondering what backs up Bitcoin. What makes Bitcoins worth money? I just tuned in. Maybe you covered it already. But... We did. We did. But we'll cover it again. Thanks for the call, okay. Roger. Real quick. Yeah, basically, Bitcoins are, are worth money because people agree that they're worth money, and they're incredibly useful as a currency. You can send them anywhere in the world instantly without anyone getting involved. Because they have useful value in the marketplace. Great time. Thanks for coming on tonight, Roger. Thanks very much, Roger. My, you can give my us call. Thank you, guys. Thank you. By the way, Roger's selling physical Bitcoins, which are really cool, over at MemoryDealers.com. That's free his talk, only interest in Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. Free Talk Live, 855-453. That's a SACL toll-free call in line here on the live Saturday edition of Free Talk Live. You can give us a call at 855-453 and talk about whatever you want to talk about. That's what we do here on Free Talk Live. So Eight. we were going to move on, um, and but somebody else wanted to talk about the Bitcoin thing. So for those of you just tuning in, uh, we've been talking about Bitcoins with Roger Ver from Memory Dealers. He's a huge fanatic for Bitcoins. He's the guy – you've heard us talking about Bitcoins for weeks and months on this show. It's because of Roger. He's the one who's uh, been buying the ads to have us promote the Bitcoin. But interestingly, he heard about Bitcoin by us talking about it on the air. So it's kind of funny how that all that's panned out. But when we get a chance, we're going to talk about a smoking ban coming up here in a little bit. First, let's continue this discussion. Yep. Roger, can you hear me? Yep. Just wanted to make sure you're on. Now, one thing you said that uh, convinced you that uh, Bitcoins were really going to make it, and I think what we should mention this uh, real quick is – Poker, online poker. Right. I, I heard on your show about uh, – I've never even once played poker online myself. But I heard on your show about the United States government coming in and telling people that they, what they can and can't do with their own money. Lots of people enjoy playing poker online on the Internet with real money. The government decided, no, we know what's best for you. You can't do that. Uh, but that's when I put two and two together. People want to play poker. The government can't stop Bitcoin transactions. People are going to use Bitcoin for poker, and there's lots and lots of sites coming online that are accepting real money as Bitcoins, to, so people can play poker online from at home anywhere in the world, including the United States. So if you used to play poker online for real money and you couldn't do it because the government's uh, cracked down on that, now you can with Bitcoin. Yeah, right, and, and, and Bitcoins are real money. You can buy, sell, and trade with them um, in real life. And the way that the government, of course, cracked down on this was to target the financial transaction, the, you know, the credit the card companies, yep. the banks. And they said, if we catch you doing business with any of these online poker places, we're going after you. So it's not particularly illegal for the individual, as I understand it, to play the poker. It's illegal for them to utilize any sort of U.S.-based financial company, you know, credit card company, bank, etc., and use their services to get the money into the poker account. But if you're using Bitcoin, you're doing a, an end run around the entire thing and they can't take that out because Bitcoin is a completely decentralized uh, peer-to-peer yeah, it's currency. Not even, it's, not a, it's not even an illegal activity because as far as the government's concerned, Bitcoins aren't money. Well, that's a good point. Bitcoins aren't anything yet as far as the government's concerned. They haven't figured out how to classify them legally. Let's, so let's, we'll see what happens. Uh, but Roger, let's go to Dan in Maine here. I think we've got a, a question here. Dan? Hey, uh, what's going on, guys? All's well. Uh, with what's Roger Furr. Uh, I just wanted uh, to chime in on the Bitcoins thing, and uh, I've actually uh, just started uh, using Bitcoins pretty much when I heard about it from you guys. And uh, I've actually used Silk Road many times since then. Pretty cool. The Silk Road is a, an online black market for Bitcoin transactions. 
Yeah, and not not just a bit, not just like a black market stuff, but you can get just like regular things on there, which is pretty cool. Well, let me ask you, Dan, what uh, what have you gotten at Silk Road? Uh, I've gotten seeds for uh, cannabis. Uh huh. I've gotten MDMA. Um, ephedrine, which is like a caffeine substitute. Isn't that like to, you know, so the ephedrine, you can also use it, it's for allergies or something, isn't it? Yeah, it's a allergenic that's just recently like been banned, but it's, uh, you know, you can use it as a caffeine substitute diet, suppress it, and it's good for allergies. Gotcha. So it's pretty cool. Okay. Excellent. And, Glad uh, to hear that's worked out. Stuff. Have you been ripped off at all through the, the Silk Road? Uh, no, I have not been ripped off. They have a really awesome rating setting, like it, pretty much just like eBay, except a little bit more open source to it. And most everyone that you buy from, you know, you're like, oh, they have a 99 rating or a 100 rating. You feel pretty safe. Right. Most it makes sense. I mean, if you're going to rip somebody up. off, then they're they're going to give you a bad rating and then nobody's going to buy from you in the future. If, well, if you have the choice of uh, somebody who's got a, a rating of 75 versus somebody who's got 99, you're going to buy from the 99. Yeah, and think about yep. what that does for the black marketplace. I mean, if anybody is listening has ever bought anything on the black market, you know that you're frequently dealing with dealers that uh, may be a little shady, a less little incredible. Shifty. Uh, may you know maybe they're maybe they're nice people, but they don't know that they've gotten a bad product in. For instance, I know some people who purchased yep. some MDMA from a street dealer, uh, you know, at one point, and you know they happen to have a testing kit, so they tested it and they found out it was not real, because <laughs> so, that's frequent yeah, in the black market. Or something. What's that? Half baking soda or something, or what, or nothing. There, or in many cases, doesn't have MDMA in it at all. It's a completely different drug, like DXM. And uh, but if you're if you're going through Silk Road, you've got different vendors that are competing for your business, but they're all competing yeah. anonymously. So in the black market, you know these turf wars happen, and people get shot over selling illegal drugs. But on the internet, nobody knows who anybody else is. Can't so, shoot anybody you don't know. So you've got literally open air competition for these products which increases the likelihood that you're going to get what you actually ordered and is probably going to drive prices down a little bit yep and uh like in that instance their rating is their sole means of like uh keeping their business perpetual if they fuck up their rating oh we've got to hit the uh the dump button on that one sorry there dude gotta let you go this is a radio program. You can't say that on can't the radio. Can't drop the F-bomb on the radio. We Roger. can talk about, you know, drugs, but you can't say the F-bomb. <laughs> Any comments on uh, Dan's experience? Yeah, uh, the Silk Road from a technology standpoint is actually really, really interesting. Uh, basically, the way it works is uh, through some special anonymizing software called the Tor Network. Nobody knows who runs this website, and the website doesn't know who's accessing this website. And because you're paying with bitcoins, and then they send it through a big mixer, Nobody can track back who actually paid for whatever order on the Silk Road. So if the police were to intercept whatever drugs or illegal something that was shipped in the mail to you, you would have total deniability. You could say, I didn't pay for that. I have no idea who shipped that to me. I don't know anything about it. Prove it. Because they can't trace the, yeah, they can't trace the payment back to you because of the way the Bitcoin network works. So from a technology standpoint, it's really, really interesting. And basically, it allows people to buy and sell whatever they want uh, Free of government control, so it's really, really interesting. I think that's, that's so exciting. That Let's go to Chris in Alabama. Uh, Chris, you've got a question? Yeah, I had a quick question about Bitcoin. Um, I'm an avid listener, and I've heard you guys talk about them so much, but uh, one uh, little thing I'm curious about is how, when you get them in the first place, uh, is there not some sort of transaction with a credit card or a PayPal account? How do you purchase them to begin with? I'll, I'll take that question. So the easy, the easiest way, I think, is to have somebody pay you in Bitcoins for something that you provide uh, for them, whether it's a physical good or a service. Um, another way is you can walk in and deposit cash at any bank account, uh, I'm sorry, at any Chase location and buy it through one of the exchanges. Uh, you can also find someone that's nearby that's willing to exchange cash for Bitcoins, or you can buy them online with a credit card. Uh, and I know for a fact uh, in another couple of weeks here, there's going to be a whole lot more people that are actually start selling virtual bitcoins directly with a credit card so you won't have to wait or goof around with shipping anything through the mail well so doesn't crypto exchange yeah crypto exchange.com at uh, bitcoin.freetalklive.com um we will we'll do it for you right now chris you can go to bitcoin.freetalklive.com they've got a banner there um and uh, you can check it out we've also got a little free talk live tip jar where you can put bitcoins in why because these things re- this is real money it's not United yes, States dollars, and you know I'm not used it's to. It's more real than that because they can't print these things out. Yep, yep. I mean, and I- it's much more convenient than that. So, uh, Mark and I had a little conversation off the air about the Free State Now project, where yep. he's trying to get additional people to sign up, 
And uh, he, we talked about it a little bit, and I decided, okay, I'll make a donation to that. So I went over to freestatenow.com, found the Bitcoin address, and from here in Tokyo, I sent $1,000. He already has it in his Bitcoin account. Wow. Uh, just by a couple of clicks on my computer, he already has it. And if I hadn't announced on the air here, nobody would know who that money came from. Or I where, didn't know. Where it, uh, <laughs> yeah, and it, if you check, it's already in your account. I already sent it. And uh, just like that, I didn't have to ask Visa or MasterCard or the Japanese government or the U.S. government or anybody for any permission there it is. whatsoever. And he just, got all 1000 too. There. He, yeah. there's No fees were taken out in that transaction. There it is. I guess there it is. Thank I you. 450 my main... bitcoins sent. So. Say again, sir? Uh, so I, I guess my concern is um, you mentioned that, yes, you could go into a Chase bank and pay cash for them, or you could purchase them online uh, with a credit card. But if you did not know anybody who had these or uh, could not find a private dealer, I, I wonder if the government really wanted to trace you back to the beginning transaction. Uh, say you had purchased a large amount of illegal drugs through Silk Road or something like that, and the government started catching on to this and wanted to dig deeply into it. Is there not some sort of paper trail at the beginning of the process? But Bitcoins themselves aren't illegal, so there's tons and tons of non-illegal shops that take Bitcoins, so you can buy a new TV or, you know, food or anything you want online with Bitcoins. Wait, let's, let's, explain a little fur- uh, let's explain a little further here in a hold moment. Hold everybody. We'll come back. Yep. Free Talk Live, 855 450 free. Free Talk Live, 855-450 free. That's the SACL toll-free call in line here on the live Saturday edition of Free Talk Live. It's Mark with you. And Ian. Yeah, I'm doing the uh, main chair here because Ian's voice is, uh, well, Shot. needs to be saved as best we can. Um, you can give us a call at 855-450 free. We've been doing, well, at this point going on an hour and a half with uh, Roger Ver about, from MemoryDealers.com about Bitcoins. And we'll bring Roger back here in a second. But, you know... It, Eight five five two get vapor. The e cigarette is as revolutionary a product to the world of uh, smokers as uh, the Bitcoin is as revolutionary to the world of uh, monetary transactions. I think we might find in the future, and this is just a guess, that Bitcoins are prob- one of the most revolutionary, it's the most le- revolutionary things since the internet. Oh, I, th- I think it's 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 huge, obviously, and that's what we're here talking with Roger Ver about from MemoryDealers dot com. That's right. We bring Roger back on here, Roger. Great. Let's get back to Chris. Uh, was he in uh, listening in Huntsville? Yep. Um, well, uh, B- BHP. Yep. That's that's Huntsville. Great, Chris. Hey. Okay. So, got everybody so Chris, back on here. Your your concern was, uh, you know, your your issue was, well, when you get these bitcoins, this decentralized, uh, you know, this anonymous digital currency. That you're worried about the initial transaction where you're feeding into a Bitcoin account, say, with a credit card or with uh, money in a bank account or something like that, and concern that the government will be able to track it down the line to what you use it for. Is that correct? Yes, I think that pretty much sums it up. Roger, what do you say to that? Well, uh, if you're concerned about that, one easy way to solve that problem is to go to MemoryDealers.com with your credit card, buy some of the physical Bitcoins that I'm selling, and then I'll ship those to you in the mail. When you get them, you can peel the holograms off and then redeem them back into virtual Bitcoins. And nobody will know which Bitcoins I sent you because there are seven and a half million Bitcoins currently. And each Bitcoin has its own unique history. And nobody will know which ones of those actual Bitcoins you have of those seven and a half million. But That's I mean, that way. seems a little roundabout, Roger. Wouldn't it just be easier to just you, you, you feed money into a Bitcoin account and then just send it to another account? And they don't know they don't know that that's your account. Like the second that's account exactly you send right. it to, they don't know. That's exactly right. So as soon as you send it from one Bitcoin address to another, they have no idea right. who owns the next. Bitcoin It's not even address. really so a different account, right? I mean, it's the same. It's the same account. It's just a different. So you can use. You can have your Bitcoin wallet and then use a, a number that you generate in your Bitcoin wallet to send yourself some money inside the same wallet. Essentially, isn't that the way it is? I mean, you. It's just a random that's right, generated that's number. Right. That's right, but anybody looking from the outside won't know if that second address that the coins were sent to is owned by you or owned by somebody you know, in Zimbabwe. You have no idea where in the world that other wallet's uh, address, who, that, who owns that one. Okay, so the individual Bitcoin addresses are um, perfectly anonymous, I suppose, uh, after the first transaction. That's kind true. Of, you, can have, you can have as many different Bitcoin addresses as you want, and nobody will know how many Bitcoin addresses you've actually generated. So maybe they'll know okay. the first Bitcoin address that you received the Bitcoins to, but then once you right, send it to the right. next address, they don't know who, who owns that address. Cool. Well, that answers my question. Thank you. 
Hey, thanks for the call, no Chris. Problem. Appreciate it. Now, now people can go because there are always a lot of questions. This is a new technology. Sure, sure. New things are scary. Change is uh, intimidating. So I, we haven't mentioned we use coins yet here, and that's something that Roger. Oh, that's important. That yeah. you've been promoting. We use coins dot com is where people or can or. go. Or, or, okay, well, people go to com. So we use coins.com is where people can go. There's like a nice intro video there. It's a good site for people to get the, the basics about Bitcoin. That's right. It's a great introduction to Bitcoins. If you're still trying to figure out what the heck is a Bitcoin, we use coins.com is a great place to start learning about what this world changing technology is. It's really going to change the way the entire world's financial systems work. And I'm really excited about that. And, uh, that's why I you know, wanted to talk to you guys about Bitcoins. It's thank, a bold thank you claim, for Roger. Them to me. It's a bold it claim. Is, but I've hardly been able to sleep since first you know, hearing about Bitcoins. I've been so excited about it. And the more I think about it, the more confident I am that Bitcoin really is the most important invention since the Internet itself. It's going to change the way the entire world works by giving back control of people's money to each individual. Huge. Uh, it's huge. really exciting. And if you love liberty, you should love Bitcoins. There you go. Well, uh, let's, John, uh, do you have a question, time for one more question here, Roger? Absolutely. Okay, let's go to John in Texas. John? Oh, my. Hey, John, uh, you're on, with you're on the air with Roger Ver. Um, yeah. I just wanted to like, mention this cool um, thing that, where you can like, trade Bitcoins. Um, it's called Bitcoin OTC, Bitcoin Dash OTC on Freenode. It's an IRC channel. Right. Okay. I, that's, you you yeah. got to remember something, John. You're talking with uh, a, an, a, you know, an international audience that may not be as uh, technically adept as you are. So IRC is probably oh. a little bit too advanced. Oh. You're talking about the internet oh. relay chat. Uh, I sure don't know what the heck it is. Right. So, <laughs> so you got to keep things at a more general level for, for people to really kind of understand. Yeah. Um, like IRC is like an online chat room thing. Right, it's right. Like, yeah, but it's not easy for easy. people to. Yeah. It's not easy yeah. for people to get there. Do you see what I'm saying? Like if people go to weusecoins.com, yeah. it's really easy for them because then they can go and they can watch There's a video, video, push play, and they can understand <laughs> it. Uh, you're talking about like more advanced sort of stuff, and I appreciate yeah. that. And, and I know I, I know you're excited about it, John. I do, um, and I appreciate the call. Thank but, you for that. So, uh, Roger, anything else you want to share tonight about uh, bitcoins? Yeah, just uh, to everybody out there who's hearing about them for the first time. It's worth your while to go out there and learn about bitcoins. It's going to change the way the entire world's financial system works. And uh, I, it, if if you're in favor of you know individuals having more control over their lives, you should love bitcoin because that's exactly what bitcoin's going to do. It's going to give everybody control of their own money. And if the world was using bitcoins, the bailouts couldn't have happened. All these wars that you see going on, I don't think would be able to happen because most of those are paid for by the government inflating the currency. Mm -hmm. With Bitcoin, yeah. it cannot be inflated, and so the governments wouldn't have money for all these wars you see going around all over the world. Yep. So if you're against war and in favor of personal liberty, you need to start using Bitcoin. And that's why you know I'm sponsoring Bitcoin's uh, commercials on your show. Because I think it'll make the world a better place, and I'm really, really excited about that. You know, uh, people really don't uh, get this, but you know, back when the the U.S. dollar was more tied to uh, gold and silver, um, you know, during the the World War II. They asked people to buy war bonds in order to support the war effort. But you'll notice during the war on ter terror, what George Bush said was "go shopping." I mean, that was his advice: go shopping, and that's because. The United States currency is backed by nothing now, and there is, you know, there's. They don't need you to buy war bonds. They're just printing it up and, you know, in, in computers somewhere, uh, making making new dollars, and they don't need you to buy anything. Roger, Bitcoin I think, stops that. I think we finally covered everything for tonight. I thank you for staying in the extra uh, the extra half hour to field all those phone calls. Thank you so much for having me, guys. Thanks, Roger. More Roger. coming up. Let's talk about the smoking ban on the way. This one is about as outrageous as they get. Free talk live. We are doing a promotion here on Free Talk Live. Uh, we're calling the Stocking Stuffer Holiday Promotion. It's exciting. And we've been giving away all kinds of different prizes at our Facebook page. It's uh, facebook.freetalklive.com. And, you know, just a bunch of things. Toto sacks, uh, Vapor Smiths, uh, Vaporizers, uh, Liberty Stickers, Five Packs, Ruger's B Ruger BX25 Magazines, copies of the movie Guns and Weed, copies of the movie Yearly um, that we're going to be giving away. I haven't actually done any of those yet, but uh, I'm getting ready to go. But Roger Ver, who was on with us here from uh, MemoryDealers.com, talking about uh, Bitcoins, has made a very generous offer. He's going to give 
a hundred bitcoins away, one to every person that po- posts a Bitcoin address at uh, facebook.freetalklive.com. And that is our Facebook page. And so, and I think you can probably go get yourself a Bitcoin address very quickly. Ian, where would you go, go, go to get the one of these wallet things? Oh, well, that's easy. You just go to install the Bitcoin client on your computer and it gives you one. Well, how do you how do you get where where do you go to install the Bitcoin client? I'm pretty sure that's Bitcoin.org. Okay, Bitcoin.org. You could probably certainly we use Coins.org uh, to get this, and I don't think that hundred is going to go too too quickly. Um, so you might have a chance to go and uh, and and read. It'll it. take you five minutes to install this thing. It's just yeah. you just go to Bitcoin.org. The download links are right there at the top right. Download it for Windows, for Linux, for Mac. Install it. And then you've got your first Bitcoin address, and yep. then just post that over at facebook.freetalklive.com. And Roger will give you a Bitcoin. So you get your first Bitcoin completely free. Bitcoin's right now worth about, what, $2.20? $2.20 US. Yeah, I've got, uh, I've got a little, I've got a little what, what do you call it, applet on my phone that tells me? A widget, yep. is that what it is? So um, anyway. They, yeah, and unlike the, uh, the financial markets, which open and close at a certain time, as far as, you know, well, what's the price of gold today? Well, you have to, the, the price is only available, you know, only changes during a certain time of day. Bitcoin, it's 24 7. Yep. You go to sleep at night. It's 226 right now, as a matter right, The price in the morning when you wake up is going to be different than yep. when you went to sleep. Yeah, it was uh, almost $3 earlier um, in the week, and, mm-hmm. you know, it'll, it's back down to 220. Seems like a good time to buy. I don't know. You can uh, certainly buy some more if you One have thing's to- for sure, you don't know what's going to happen with Bitcoin, right? I mean, well, I do know this. You don't know how high or how low it's going to go, but the um, algorithm that makes it uncounterfeitable is worth something. And oh yeah, sure. I that, think it's always going to be worth something. Yeah. Just you can't predict what is going to happen to it. Right. I'm not going to say that it's not going to go down to a buck. I don't know, yeah. but um, it could very well shoot back up to thirty again. I, I you know, hard to say. It's Only just time will tell. So uh, it's facebook.freetalklive.com to uh, post your Bitcoin address uh, for and get get a free Bitcoin. And uh, that's very generous of Roger Ver to have uh, done that for us. He's a generous kind of guy. Uh, well, he, he, he promotes the things he believes in. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's, that's what it's about. Um, you know, and, and I thank him for it.